Good morning. I'm sorry we have to come to you this way, but unfortunately, as the rest of you, we're all closed down because of this coronavirus. But we wanted to offer you a service from St. Jude's so that uh, hopefully it can lift you up at this stressful time. So I'm going to begin with uh, some music. Thank you.
Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ear consider well the voice of my supplication. O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore you shall not be feared. I waited for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, with him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now we're going to hear a portion of the Gospel according to John. We'll be talking about the raising of Lazarus, chapter 11 of the Gospel of John. Now, a certain man was ill, Lazarus in Bethany, the village, uh, in Bethany, the village of, of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to Jesus, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death, for it is the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, so that when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and you're going to go there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he'll recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought he meant taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas, one called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now, when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus was already, had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everywhere who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she said this, she went and called her sister Mary, and say, saying in private, The teacher is here, and he's calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, 
So Mary, rise quickly, go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going into the tomb to weep. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved, and in the spirit greatly troubled. And he said to her, Where have you laid him? She said, They said to him, come, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Jesus then said, Was deeply moved again. And he came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away from the stone, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there'll be an odor, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! Well, the man who had died came out. His hands and feet were bound, and with linen cloths and strips. His face was wrapped with cloth, and Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. O Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing that thou commandest, and desire that which thou dost promise, so that among the sundry and manifold changes of this world, our hearts may surely there be fixed for true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the, who art the author of love and of peace, author of peace and love and of comfort, in knowledge of whom standeth the, our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that we, being ordered by thy governance, may do always what is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
He was a he was a good man. He was a very faithful, stalwart member of my parish up there, St. Francis. Whole family was his wife, his kids. They were all there. He, he had a good family. He was a good husband. He was he was a good father. He had a good job. He had a really no. He was a uh, insurance business is what he had. He had his health. Everything was doing fine. Well, he developed a cough. And then he started to have some trouble breathing. So his his wife Jean told him he better go see the doctor. He didn't think he needed to, but Jean was someone he paid attention to. So he went off to see the doctor, and the doctor asked him some questions, listened to his lungs, and says, said to him, you know, uh, Dick, that's what he knew him as, says, Dick, I think we need to go put you in the hospital and take some tests. So he says, well, I've got a business to run. He said, no, no, no. He said, you need to go to the hospital. And uh, Dick, knowing that's what, his, what uh, Gene and his kids would tell him, he'd be outvoted and said, all right. So he closed up his business. And uh, for the time, they went off to the hospital. And they started taking some tests. They came back in you know, x-rays and said, Dick, you got a spot in the lung. I'm afraid it doesn't look good, but we want to take some more tests to be sure. He said, well, all right. So, uh, and tell his family and things. The next day they went to go take them and have some tests. They had to go, they had this, I guess you would call it like a gurney kind of thing, to go and take them down there. And um, they started to take them to it, and something happened. Don't know exactly what, the gurney, the one side collapsed, and he fell and broke his neck, as it turned out. He was paralyzed. Turned out the cancer was lung cancer, as you can imagine. And uh, there was nothing they could do about it. So family being his family, he said, let's take him home. He said, I'm going to go home. I'm going to die. I'm going to die at home. Okay. I would go to visit him, be at home. Went there. Or you could imagine how his wife was. Times. She pulled me aside. And she said, Father David, He said, I know everything I'm supposed to say. He says, I know what everybody's trying to tell me. He says, I know what most of the clergy I know are going to say. They just don't work now. She said, she said, you know, truth is, sometimes what God is doing just doesn't make any sense. What could I say but amen? I had been a priest long enough to know you shut up because you know exactly how that feels. She said, well, why? He's a good man. He's a faithful man. Why has this happened? Why has God done this? What is going on? Oh, I was thinking about this because for a lot of folks, that's exactly what they're thinking. Here it is, we're at home. Some of the folks that we know probably have folks that have this virus that's going around. Maybe some of them have died. Some people I know have died. All right. And we, we can't even get out to see them in the hospital. Not even me as a priest can do that. Yeah. Folks are shut up in their homes. They're told to go and isolate. They can't get out. They can't go to their job. Some aren't getting paid. Uh, they're worried about how they're going to pay their bills as we're waiting for this to be done. They're worried that somebody in their family, their spouse, their kids, are going to get this thing that's going around. Where are they going to find solace? They drive by the church here. 
Doors are locked. Science saying there. Church closed. We've got to keep away. We can't spread this. We have to do it, but it doesn't make any sense now, does it? Makes no sense at all. It feels like for many of us, many of you out there too, that the rugs were pulled out from under you. And you wonder, does this make any sense? Does, does God make any sense with what he's doing? I'm not here today to try to go and explain it away. I can't, and you'd see through it, I'm sure. So, it's just it. Well, I'm thinking of this because that's exactly what was going on with Martha and Mary. Let's just try to unpack this story for a minute here. You know, Lazarus, their brother, gets sick. All right, and they get sick, and he, uh, and people come and said, "Lad, your brother's sick." He said, you've "Got to do something." And, they, and Martha and Mary said, "Don't worry, we got a friend." We got a friend. His name's Jesus. All right. He's uh, he's already gone and healed the blind man who could see. He's uh, healed folks of all kinds of conditions and things. This will be no sweat for Jesus. So what they did, they I don't know how they did it. It was like a first century text that they sent. Jesus, your friend Lazarus is sick. Come. Come and take care of it. Right? You know, totally the crowd that was hanging around, neighbors and friends. They sent it out, then they waited. Where is he? So they waited longer. Where is he? I mean, where he was at was just a few miles away. Didn't make any. Didn't. Where is he when we need him? Finally, a few days later, they get word that Jesus is on the way. Folks come around and say he's just, you know, he's, he's just down the road a piece. Problem is, Lazarus was dead. Right. Gotta understand what the scriptures here. Lazarus was dead. None of this trying to get around and say, oh, they just made a mistake here. He was dead. That's the point of this, of this scripture reading. Well, you can see how Mary and Martha felt. Mary was there. They buried Lazarus by that point. Mary went home, slammed the door, and said, I don't want to see him. He's not going to set foot in my house. I quit praying. I know folks say that kind of thing. I'm, I'm done with church. That's it. You know, is that uh, turns out I was a fool. Well, Martha, she's a different way of working at it. She's one of the get in your face kind of people. All right? So when she saw Jesus coming up the street, she ran down. You know, you know when you ever had that one person point in your face with that steely finger? Kind of says, my brother was sick and where were you? None of this would have happened if you got here on time. Right? She, was, she was angry. All right? You know, can you understand that? None of this would have happened. So she, can you see where it resonates where we are? We're saying to God, well, look God, we, we're trying to live right. There's good church right here, good people. Why is this happening? It shouldn't be. Lord, where are you when we need you? It's like that Psalm said, uh, the one that said, Lord, I'm in it up to my neck and where are you? That's why I love the Psalms, because they tell the truth to God and speak our truth to Him. But it always leads us to God's truth in the end. So where is God in all of this mess? 
Where was God for, La for, for Lazarus, and for Mary, and Martha? Where was he? Where is he for us now? Where is he for all these people throughout the whole world that are facing such horrible conditions? Where is he for, for us as a church that we can't even walk in the doors at this point? Uh, the scripture has two words that it says right there. Shortest, the shortest verse in the whole Bible. I bet you know it. It said, Jesus wept. Now, when he wept, as I read this, I didn't see he was weeping because Lazarus was dead. He was weeping because he could see what this had done to the faith and trust of Mary and Martha and how it tested people to the extreme and people crumbled. Now, I want to be clear that when you go and through some of this stuff in your life and you kind of crumble and even your faith seems to get weak and weak, that doesn't mean you're wrong or bad Christian or anything like that. It just means you're going through stuff. And you need to bring it to the Lord. That, that, that's the truth. I mean, many's the time when I've gone, and gone to people, like I went with Gene, just uh, when Richard was dying, and we cried together because words weren't going to suffice. But what Jesus was saying, he said, you know, what I'm offering is something to get you through this. That's what he was saying. You know, he, you know, he says, you know, the truth of the matter is, you need to remember that God can handle this. All right? With what we're going through, with our worries, you know, having this door closed to the church, people losing their, their jobs, families being ill, God can handle it. You need, you need to be sure you understand that. And somehow, some way, God's glory will, will be revealed. That means we will, we will see how he leads us through it. Because God is still God. Even if the doors are shut at the moment, even if we have to pray at home alone, God is still God. And he hasn't abandoned us. So, Jesus goes to where they had laid Lazarus. You know, notice in the scriptures, all the crowd kind of stayed back a lot of that. You know, they went in, went into the uh, cave where Lazarus was raised. They were just there going to go and say, all right, let's go see what he's going to do now. You know, all the skeptics, all the second guessers. We bet, we bet on the wrong horse. Well, it, but, but uh, was it Mary went in with them? I expected it, not they? I, I expect what they wanted. They wanted to look in his eyes when he laid his eyes on the dead body of Lazarus. He wanted, he wanted, he, they wanted him to feel real ashamed that he didn't show up. You see that favor. They felt it was all over. Their relationship with Jesus was done for. Well, what did Jesus do? He brought new life to Lazarus, didn't he? He called to Lazarus, and he said to Lazarus, Come out of there! You're not meant to live amongst the dead. Be given new life. He's, and then he goes and tells him, I am the resurrection. I am the life. God's in the midst of all of this. He gets us through it. Repeat what I said, but you need to, you need to believe it. There's new life at the end of this. There is. And wherever we end up through this, we're going to be stronger for it. Our faith will be stronger. For us here at St. Jude's, the church is going to be stronger because we're going to remember what the church is. 
The church is the people of God that God has gathered together here. That's who, that's who the church is. Not the building that's locked up at the moment, but the people that every day at nine in the morning, they're, they're every, in their homes, all throughout Walterboro, me and Buford, we're saying morning prayer, we're praying to God, we're praying for each other. It strengthened us as a community, as the people of God. And God is bringing new life out of this. He's showing us what's important and what isn't important. You see what I mean? And that's the witness that God is building within us to the doubters, to the skeptics, to the unbelievers, to the folks who don't know the Lord yet. The witness isn't the church with open doors at the moment. The church is the people with open hearts. The ones who they're praying for each other, praying for the community, praying for people they don't even know who they are, but they're praying for them, lifting their, their names up to God. The church is the place where if somebody is scared at home and they've run out of provisions, like we do, or what we do here, is we go and make sure somebody goes to the store and leaves what they need at their doorstep. That's what the church is. And the word gets around. People find out. And they say, maybe that's what the church is. Now, it's not about arguing and bickering and the bad things people do with each other when they gather together. But the church are, are the God-inspired, God-blessed things that we do. That bring us together. Oh, by the way, with Dick, I need to finish up here. Uh, I should mention, I would go to visit him. You know, this did not erode his faith one bit. Every morning, he had Gene get him up, put him in his wheelchair, wheel him over so he could watch the sunrise. And he would say his prayers and give thanks to God that God gave him one more day. We'd go to visit him. He would say, I want you to sing a hymn. And he'd pick one out and he'd get the family and we'd sing. When the time came for his death, it wasn't the end of stuff. Instead, we would sing, we sang hymns. We sang it to the Lord. Right? That witness took his genes, shattered faith, and healed. Right? And kept her relationship with the Lord strong. It was a witness to his kids. They never missed church after that kind of thing. It was a, it was a witness to the whole parish. And it helped us to be the kind of church God meant for us to be. And I truly believe that we that what God will do with us as we try to live through this, as God leads us through it, we get to the other side. And people, if our witness has been the kind of witness God God wants, others will see it, and others will come to Him. People in your families, people, your neighbors, you don't know who. They're going to come to it. They're going to come to this Lord of life. And they're going to say, what is it about them? They kept these folks together. You, we're going to bring them where they can drink the, uh, the living water. And they'll find a place where they can be reborn into new life in Christ. Amen. <laughs>
prayers, I wanted to say thank you to our organizing choir, Pastor David Eber, for this choir. It is, I can't imagine how hard it is to sing together while standing, while standing six feet apart from each other. But they, they made it work. And for Tom, who, this technology is beyond my brain to understand. I appreciate it very much. But we're going to have some final prayers, but do you have anything? Oh, and also, for Green Pond Baptist Church, I've got it right, correct? Right. You know, that we, we share many things together, and one of them is Alice here, and uh, we visit each other and sing together, and it's, it's just good that we're worshiping together. All right, people we need to pray for, we need to mention any names before we get the flag of prayers. Mary Ann Johnson. Yes, she's in the hospice at the moment. Pray for Patty and her difficulties. Nobody else? Or to kneel for Christ and prayers. First, I want to pray for the lows during this time of the coronavirus. Almighty God, the source of all life, you are the ultimate healer. Father, we come before you to pray for those infected with this virus. We pray not only for their healing, but for them to be comforted while they heal. Lord, please eradicate every ounce of this virus from their bodies. Please heal every cell in their bodies, every infected part of their being. We pray for no lasting effects in their bodies from this illness. Father, please heal them on the inside and on the outside and provide them with the medical care that they need, with the medications they need, and with the healing not only physically but spiritually, so that they may live life and life abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, the many folks who are very scared in all of this, we need to pray for them. Our Father who brings comfort to the distressed, your holy word reminds us the perfect love casts out all fear. And we pray your perfect love upon the hearts of all those who are burdened with the fear of this virus. Lord, we know that without a doubt, you are bigger than the threat of, of any, especially this illness. Please comfort those who are living in fear. Please free them from the bondage that anxiety creates within. Remind them that you are on the and that you are always in control. Rain down the serenity that comes only from the Prince of Peace. Help those who are living in unease to trust in you during this time, so that in times to come we may rest assured that you are faithful to be with us until the end of the age. We rest this at the throne of the Almighty, such fears and cast them upon you. For your burden is light, your yoke is easy, and we know that you cover us with your wings. We pray also for those who are caring for the sick. Dear Father, who calls us to care for all in need, we pray for those who are caring for the sick. It takes a kind of a selfless heart to care for those who are sick. And so, Father, we pray for them. We pray that you would be their source of rest, their source of replenishment when weary, and their source of hope in such overwhelming times. Lord, we know that whatsoever pours out shall be given back in proportion. So we pray blessings upon these caregivers. We also pray for their help that they may not fall ill. Father, protect them, put a hedge around against the germs of the coronavirus, and help those who are given, to, uh, given aid to be protected as they nurse others back to help. Bless them, O Lord, we pray this in the name of Jesus, the great physician. Amen. Amen. Now we'll join in the great thanksgiving. Almighty God, Amen. Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, who give thee most humble and honor thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love, 
in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfaintly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, we the world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.